Plan video. And if they call me so my name, cause she loves me. What is up guys? Welcome back to Halfland Performance, Halfland Videos. Uh, today we finally got the local customer build, uh, the 300 wheel horsepower NA J30 build going on. Um, so far all he was able to do is install the our Halfland um, ported and polished runners. So he's been driving around for you know a few days on it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go dyno and see what the damn thing makes. makes. Again guys, it's a uh, j30 a4 all it has is exhaust and a short ram intake just like not doing anything um on stock ecu so we're going to show you guys what our ported and polished runners can do on a j30 stock ecu and let's see what it does obviously um if it was tuned it would be a little higher horsepower but i'm not trying to sugarcoat anything for you guys i'm going to show you exactly what the damn thing makes and let's see what it does and as you can see here, you guys, got the Halfland Performance Honda J-Series Gapping Association shirts. Um, super, super nice, guys. They're on sale now on our website. Go under Merch and uh, Decals on our online store, and you can have them. Uh, $25.99. They, um, our next shirt, we're going to make it a little more of a simple design, make it a little more affordable, as these are pretty detailed, uh, pretty high quality. Actually, very high quality. Um, the printing is, is incredible on them. So please show your support. Please uh, uh, take a look at the shirt. Buy one. And we appreciate it, guys. Another look. Honda J-Series Gapping Association. Uh, half a land performance. All right, let's get to the dyno. All right, guys, we are back at the dyno. We have the uh, local customer build 2004 Honda Accord V6 six speed. Everything is identical to the way it was before. Only thing we did was install our half a land ported and polished uh, intake runners, the lower runners. So let's see what it does, guys. Just a reminder, he's on a stock ECU, um, no tuning whatsoever. guys so uh, when we got here the car was heat soaked but as you can see here didn't pick up as much as uh, it should be really with our port and polished runners I've never seen anything less than five or six wheel horsepower and that's not me trying to save face or anything that is 100% fact every single car I've ever seen dyno our runners at the bare minimum picked up five to six on a stock ECU so once again guys this is a stock ECU and I don't know what's going on with this screen but as you can see, it was super heat soaked when he got here and we went ahead, just did a quick rip and it made actually a wheel horsepower less than it did before. So if you recall in the last video, and this is why, this guys, this is why I say dynos are a tool. It is not here to show um, horsepower gains or max power or whatever. It's a dyno tool. It is made to tune and to, uh, get all the parameters set in your tune property and make sure your motor is healthy. So as you can see, we let it sit for about five minutes, uh, right around there, maybe maybe even less. And it picked up three horsepower and it, it actually picked up two wheel torque, two and a half wheel torque um, from the last time we dyno. Cause the last dyno was 238, 212. And if you remember the last pull on the last dyno, um, we let it sit for 20 minutes, okay? So we let it sit for 20 minutes, it was cool outside and we had the fan going on the motor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let it sit here for about 20 minutes and try to mimic or replicate the same conditions as it was before. Because as I said guys, the, the main reason to go to a magnesium intake manifold is for exactly what I'm showing you here. Heat, heat soak. Straight up, it is heat soak. For a daily driver, those uh, aluminum intake manifolds that come stock on these cars, they heat soak like crazy. And the customer has been driving in the car all day, had multiple appointments, and then he came over here. So the car was super heat soaked, and you can see that in the power. You see it made actually a uh, horsepower less than it did uh, before. Let it cool down for like five minutes, and it picked up three horsepower. 
So we're gonna let it sit for 20 minutes and try to replicate the conditions that we have. All right guys, last poll. We let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes. Let's see what she does. At this point, All right, guys, so uh, he went ahead, he realized he uh, didn't have the smoothing correct, so he went ahead and last time we had the smoothing at zero and this one was at five, so it lowered the power. So to be more ac accurate, we put the smoothing back down to zero and he basically made 243, uh, 217. So that's a pickup of about five wheel horsepower and four torque on an untuned J30 stock intake manifold stock throttle body short sri that's it so the only thing we did the only thing we changed was ported our half land ported and polished intake runners that's it so obviously that is a huge choke point when it comes to the intake track so right now it's basically a supporting mod because whenever most people they put an intake manifold and a throttle body and the choke point ends up being the runners but now it's kind of reversed for us for so for right now the intake manifold and throttle body are the choke point because we already did the runners so i'm i'm actually very happy with this this is about average what i'm used to seeing i'm used to seeing about five um five to eight wheel horsepower gains on a stock ecu and then tune i'm used to seeing you know uh from 10 to 15 wheel horsepower 15 is definitely on the higher side i've only seen that a couple times but usually around 10 to 12 is about average well guys i hope you liked the video as always and just to show you a little comparison he wasn't able to uh, put the comparison on the video um on the screen on the video so i went ahead and i just took screenshots what's even more impressive guys um down in the power band we were seeing gains of 10 10 wheel horsepower and seven wheel torque so a lot of people get focused on peak power it's always peak power oh how much did your car make how much did it make and they always say the peak number but what's even more impressive um as you'll see here the vtech crossover overall the power band is way smoother you see these dips these big dips right there so that's lower vtech right there that's upper vtech and you can see the engagement lower vtech drops down that means we want to uh raise that vtech level or that vtech rpm and that will smooth the graph because really guys when uh, you hear it a lot and they're like oh vtech kicked in bro you don't want to feel vtech kick in you want to audibly hear it and that's it so what that does, it smooths out the power band, as you can see up here. Up here, you can't really see that that VTEC crossover, not as much at least. So you could definitely see it there. And then here, you see how much smoother the power band is. And guys, again, stock ECU, there is no tuning. So if we were tuning, I would be able to get this power band completely smooth. Um, and what you're doing when you move that VTEC, you're basically filling in the gap within the power band. So you see how it drops off there and there's a huge lower plateau right there. So it stays low there. But if you move it up, basically all that power is going to be made. It's going to make like a straight line between those two, between that dips, those two dips right there. So basically you're gaining all of that power back Um under VTEC or between the two VTECs. So, like I said, guys, uh, overall, the uh, the runners, Porter and Polish runners on a J30, untuned, uh, basically stock motor with a 2.25 exhaust and a short ram intake, um, which actually may be hurting. I, honestly, a, cold, a true cold air intake would have been better, but that's ne neither here nor there. But this on a J30, the smallest J series motor you can have, no tuning very happy with it guys five wheel horsepower five wheel torque and like i said within the power band we were seeing as much as 10 wheel horsepower and seven wheel torque so that's what's even more impressive below the below the peak power for me at least so in the end the car made 243 uh 217 which is a nice bump from the 238 212 uh that it was making before so as always guys we're gonna keep rolling along and of course guys if we tuned it we would have saw you know an, an additional three to four wheel horsepower and um like i said it is the smallest j series motor we can possibly modify so on the larger like 3.2 tl motors obviously the more displacement you have the more it reacts to modification so on a 3.2 um 
we're used to seeing you know between seven to ten wheel horsepower untuned and then on a three five we're used to seeing about eight to twelve now if you go in tune you're going to see about twelve to fifteen on a three five on a three two you're going to see about ten to twelve and then on a three zero a j30 you're usually going to see about uh seven to ten so this is exactly um this really just uh uh, solidifies what we've been saying and all the horsepower numbers that we post on our website are always true guys we we do it as accurately as possible um, so our customers can get a better gauge of what they're gonna get and we always stress in our listings on our online store that hey it's going to be a range because it varies so greatly between vehicles you know depending on what mod you have is it tuned is it not tuned what's the weather like how does that dyno read so again guys the dyno is simply a tool to make sure your car is running right and you got all your parameters set in the tune so as always guys thank you so much for your support thank you for supporting the channel please subscribe hit that notification bell do all that good stuff and i'll see you next time by the way Got the J35A7 block back in, and I'm going to start building that bad boy out today. I will see you guys at Cletus and Cars, but we should have one more uh, one more video before that, and that should be basically assembling the motor and getting the thing ready to go. All right, guys. Peace. <laughs>